Welcome everyone. In this video, I will be explaining about nanopore sequencing. So the first generation sequencing method such as uh, Sangler method, Maxim Gilbert method. The drawback of this method was the amount of DNA that they were able to sequence per day was ranged maximum up to a number of 10,000 of kilobase pairs. So to overcome this drawback second generation sequencing methods such, such as pyro sequencing was discovered now the world of the dna sequencing is ruling by third generation sequencing method such as pyro um, pack bio sequencing method and nanopore sequencing method so nanopore sequencing method is a third generation sequencing method they work by reading the nucleotide sequence at a single molecular level instead of breaking the long strand of DNA into smaller fragments and then interfering those nucleotide sequences by amplification and synthesis. They are also known as long read sequencing method. In 2012, MIT Technology Review named the nanopore sequencing as one of its 10 breakthrough technologies of the year. Their actual coding was uh, they could make genomic sequencing a routine medical procedure. In the 1990s, Church et al., Deemer and Akeson separately proposed that it is possible to sequence DNA using nanopore sensors. So what is nanopore sequencing? What is the methodology of the nanopore sequencing? It involves threading the single DNA strands through tiny pores in the membrane so that the bases which are the chemical letters of the DNA are read one at a time as they pass through the nan nanopore. The bases are identified by measuring the differences in their effect on ions and electrical current flowing through the pore. Nanopore technologies can be broadly divided into three. Biological nanopore, solid state nanopore and the most recently discovered hybrid nanopore. Biological nanopore are also known as transmembrane protein channel. They are formed by the insertion of the protein into a substrate such as planar lipid bilayer, liposomes or any other polymer films. Examples include alpha hemolysin, MSPA and PI-29. Alpha hemolysin is an exotoxin secreted by the bacterium Staphylococcus aureus. It is a human pathogen and also it has a mushroom shaped heptameric protein. Since it has a limited pore size of 1.4 nanometer, its application is restricted to analysis of single standard DNA and RNA. Whereas MSPA that is Mycobacterium smegmatis porin A it is a very powerful nanopore for reading the information from four nucleotides simultaneously. The channel of the MSPA octama is 1 nanometer in diameter at the minimal point. So it is very efficient than the alpha hemolysin and also it can improve the spatial resolution of the single standard DNA sequencing. As you can see in this picture, there is two protein in the membrane. One is situated above the protein and other is below the protein. An enzyme will be placed at the entrance of the protein pore so that it can control the rate by which the DNA will be passing through. It is a necessary step, necessary step because it gives the sensor enough time to distinguish between the bases. The upper protein will be unzipping the DNA helix into two separate strands whereas the lower protein will be creating a pore in the membrane and holds an adapter. Mo mo adapter mo molecule. A flow of ion through the pore will be creating a current and each base will be blocking the flow to a different degree. The adapter molecule which is orange in color in the diagram will be keeping the bases in the place long enough so that they can be identified el electronically. The advantages include they are well defined and highly reproducible nanopore size and structure and they can easily modified by modern modern technology techniques such as mutating the nucleotide sequence. Whereas the disadvantages include uh, the environmental conditions such as temperature or concentration pH of the nanopore will be affecting, affecting the biological activities and also the fragility of the lipid bile will, will be making the biological nanopore for breaking down easily. So talking about a second one that is solid state nan nan nanopore, we will, be, we will be using various metal or metal alloy substrate with nano 
meter sized pores that allow the DNA or RNA to pass through. Usually we will be using silicon layer or graphene. In the diagram that is shown here, uh, we have used graphene as the membrane. The fine depth of the graphene membrane will be providing optimal spatial resolution al along the DNA. The electrodes are specifically created to enable a solid state nanopore formation between the two ele electrodes. Here are some of the examples of the solid state nanopore. They are solid based, uh, silicon based nanopore, aluminum oxide nanopore, single layer membrane that is graphene. So when comparing uh, these two, biological nanopore is having an advantage of low translocation velocity and dimensional reproducibility whereas solid state nanopore is having an advantage of stress tolerance, longevity and e ease of fabrication. So the third one is hybrid nanopore. It is having both the advantages of solid state as well as biological nanopore. The double stranded DNA will be attached into protein pore and it is threaded into a solid state nanopore by ultraphotic translocation. The protein insertion is observed in 30 to 40 percent in the atoms and the translocation of the single stranded DNA demonstrate that the hybrid nanopore remains functional. Uh, the hybrid nanopore offers a platform to create wafer scale device arrays for genomic analysis which includes sequencing. So sequencing by of the strands will be producing first some raw data. So by further sequence, sequencing, uh, so, so by further analyzing, we will be getting to know the order of the bases. Uh, the first handheld nanopore DNA sequencer is the portable minion. They produces the reads in the real time from single mo molecule. And they can also be used for direct RNA sequencing without prior reverse transcription or amplification. Following the introduction of the minion, there was the releasing of grid ion which is essentially the instrument with a slot of 5 minion flow cell and an integrated computer for base calling. 100 GB of data can be obtained within 2 days. In, in a addition, Prometheon that is a high throughput nanopore platform was tested by the early access user. Gridion contained only 5 flow, cell, flow cells whereas the Prometheon contained 48 flow cells. So around 100 GB of data was able to obtain from each flow cell in Prometheon. Advantages include uh, they are label free, then ultra long rates are able to achieve, direct DNA or RNA sequencing is possible, low capital investments only needed and direct methylom analysis was possible. Challenges include to slow down the DNA translocation from microsecond per base to millisecond and also to reduce stochastic motion of the DNA molecule in transit in order to decrease the signal or noise ratio and also they produced a high, a high row rate error rate that is 2 to 15 percent. So the approaches to nanopore sequencing include four types. The first one is strand sequencing using ionic current, uh, current blockage. A typical trace of ionic current amplitude was passed through an alpha hemolysin pore and it clearly differentiates between an open pore and a blo blocked one. Second one is exonuclease sequencing by modulation of the ionic current. An exonuclease will be attached to top of an alpha hemolysin pore uh, through a genetically encoded or chemical linker and sequentially it will uh, cleaves the DNMPs. Third one includes nanopore sequencing using synthetic DNA and optical readout. The sequence of the original DNA will be read by detecting the discrete short-lived photon burst as each oligo is stripped. And the fourth one, the last one is strand sequencing using traverse electron current. The amplitude of the tunneling current that traverse through the nucleotide is expected to differentiate each nuclear base as the DNA is ultraphotically driven through the pore. This is the end of the video. Thank you.